Hi guys, it's Frankie from Frankie Tech. Good to see you guys again. And I'm here today with a comparison I've been wanting to do for a while, the Poco X3 NFC versus the iPhone SE. And while I know a lot of you guys may immediately discount the iPhone, let me tell you it's much closer than you think. And both of these phones for their respective companies represent the best value phones that you can get. And with the iPhone SE coming in at 399 US dollars and the Poco X3 coming in at 229, it's nearly double the price difference between this phone and this phone. So how will these phones stack up? Let's go down the list, design, display, performance, quick audio test, share my camera samples, and let's see if Apple's value champ can stand toe to toe with the Poco X3 NFC. Let's have a look. But first I'd like to let you know that this video is sponsored by Dr. Phone. Repair your iOS system issues at home, like Apple Logo, Boot Loop, and many more. Fix iOS and keep your data intact with this very simple solution from Dr. Phone. And this software will allow you to downgrade iOS without iTunes. And how do you fix system issues? There are two repair modes, standard mode and advanced mode. And looking here at the setup, with standard mode you can fix up to 20 iOS problems with advanced mode allowing you to do even more fixing and this software will work with any type of iPhone including iPhone 7, 7 Plus, iPhone 8 and later as well. So all you do is put your iPhone in recovery mode, plug it in and then you'll be able to solve any problems you're having on your phone. And now with Dr. Phone's worry-free iOS update plan, you'll have a chance for 40% off this system repair software to address any iOS 14 updates, update problems, or if you want to downgrade from iOS 14. And once you fill out your vote, submit to win the brand new iPhone 12, which will be coming out very, very soon. Incredible. So what are you waiting for guys? Go check out the rules for this Dr. Phone worry-free iOS update plan. Check the links in the description for more details for this awesome event. And thanks once again to Dr. Phone for sponsoring this video. Design, 9.4 millimeters versus 7.3 millimeters. 215 grams versus 148 grams. And guys, these phones could not be any more different. Look how much thicker the Poco X3 NFC is. The iPhone looks so much smaller in the hand, but it's also much thinner and much lighter with an ion strengthened glass on the back versus Gorilla Glass 5 on the Poco X3 NFC. And I gotta tell you guys, I still love this iPhone SE product red color. It's absolutely stunning. And look at these camera modules, just a single camera on the iPhone SE versus quad camera setup on the Poco X3 NFC. And there you see it, Lightning versus USB-C, the Poco X3 NFC does have an advantage of a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Now in terms of back design and materials, I would give it here to the iPhone SE, but once you turn these phones around, it's a completely different story with a very 2020 modern look on the Poco X3 NFC and a look that, let's face it guys, this phone looks like something from 2015, 2016 with these giant top and bottom bezels and not to mention a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, which I do think is very antiquated for this day and age. I love that Apple is using premium materials in this iPhone SE, but I can't deny the fact that the Poco X3 NFC is just the more modern phone. And just because of that huge gap from more modern to more antiquated design, I gotta give the design award to the Poco X3 NFC. Display, 6.67 inch versus 4.7 inch IPS LCD on both phones, 395 versus 326 pixels per inch. And guys, just like I said in yesterday's video, this iPhone SE is LCD done right. It's a terrific panel, and I would say it is a much better panel in terms of quality than what we see on the Poco X3 NFC with close to zero light bleed on the edges and full wide color gamut support and true tone capability. But beyond the quality of the panel, there's no denying that the sheer size difference between these phones is a major factor. And the fact that you get an extra two inches, guys, two inches of extra space on the Poco X3 NFC is not insignificant. In this day and age, you use your phones so much, and this is honestly the major reason why I've kind of moved away from this iPhone SE. If it had a closer to six inch display, I could probably easily use this as my daily driver. But in this case, you just get so much more canvas to do whatever you want to do on this Poco X3 NFC. And just because of the sheer size difference and how much more display you get, I give the display award here to the Poco X3 NFC.
and here's YouTube playback on the Poco X3 NFC and the iPhone SE. And what a stark difference there is with two extra inches of content viewing area. It's just a hands down victory for the Poco X3 NFC. I do like the colors on the iPhone SE, but that's not enough to compete with the near bezel-less look and the very modern viewing experience of this Poco X3 NFC. And in DRM info, L1 on the Poco X3 NFC and every iPhone is basically HD Netflix capable, so it's an L1 party here once again on Frankie Tech. Talking about performance, and we see the Snapdragon 732G versus the Apple A13. And need I say more, guys, this is the secret power of this iPhone SE with single core scores of 1287 and multi core scores of 2500. Look at these numbers. They just absolutely trounce the Poco X3 NFC. And the Apple A13 Bionic is pretty much offering you flagship level performance on this iPhone SE. But with 6 gigs of DDR4X RAM versus 3 gigs of NV. DME RAM and 128 gigs of storage on both phones. Clearly very different performance specs from Android versus iOS. And in terms of software, MIUI 12, Android 10 versus iOS 14. And guys, I'm not going to get into a debate of which one is better here. Both of these softwares offer something terrific to the table and the Poco X3 NFC launcher is just great. And I love iOS 14 and all the improvements with widgets that we see on this iPhone SE as well. But in terms of performance, there's no denying it, guys. The winner of this section has got to be the iPhone SE, Apple A13 Bionic, flagship specs, the win here in performance for this phone. But in battery life, guys, it's a completely different story with 5,160 milliampers versus 1,821 milliampers on the iPhone SE. And with 33 watt fast charging versus 18 watt, in every single way, the Poco X3 NFC just trounces the iPhone SE when it comes to the battery experience. Now, there is one single area where the battery experience is better on the iPhone SE, and that's wireless charging. And at its price point, it is one of the few phones that offers this feature. With this phone lasting me easily two days of use and the iPhone barely lasting me one. The hands down victory in battery goes to the Poco X3 NFC. And talking about fingerprint scanners, we have a side mounted fingerprint scanner on the Poco X3 NFC. Touch ID here on the iPhone SE and you see I've switched hands here because with the Poco X3 NFC I need to use my right hand to unlock this phone. And it works pretty well but as I've mentioned before it's my least favorite thing and being a left handed person I will need to switch to my right hand to comfortably use this fingerprint scanner. Meanwhile on the iPhone SE, Touch ID I still think is one of the best fingerprint scanners on the market. It's super reliable and it's super fast. And let's do a quick test to compare. Three, two, one. And there we go. A little bit more animations here on the iPhone SE. Both are pretty fast, but again, because of the placement of the fingerprint scanner on the Poco X3 NFC, I prefer Touch ID myself. And yes, I know you end up having a lot of bezel because of it, but for me, it's the more reliable and more flexible option. And the iPhone SE wins in fingerprint scanners. And when it comes to vibration motor, while the Poco X3 NFCs is solid, there's no denying that the iPhone SE just has a better vibration motor. Guys, Apple takes their vibration motors and haptics very seriously on their phones. And with the exact same Taptic engine that was on the iPhone 8, and the iPhone SE still has one of the best vibration motors on any phone in its price segment. And in terms of comms, we have Wi-Fi AC versus Wi-Fi 6 on the iPhone SE, Bluetooth 5.1 versus 5.0, NFC on both of these phones, and honestly, you can't go wrong with the comms on either of these phones. So I'm going to call it a tie here for this section. And now the audio speaker test, dual stereo speakers on both of these phones, but the Poco X3 does have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Let me point the mic forward, let's have a listen. What can I say? A very interesting result here. And the iPhone SE does have very pleasing sound with both of its stereo speakers, but there's no denying the loudest and the clearest sounding of these two is the Poco X3. And Xiaomi has put some really great speakers in this phone. I'm super impressed, not only to see dual speakers on a phone at this price point, but to actually know that they are really solid speakers as well. So while the iPhone SE does have a decent speaker setup, I give the speaker win here to the Poco X3 NFC. And talking about cameras, 64 megapixel f1.9 IMX682 on the Poco X3 versus a 12 megapixel f1.8 on the iPhone SE. 
And as you can see, only a single camera on this iPhone. But guess what? It's a really solid camera for the price. And the Poco X3, despite having additional 13 megapixel ultra wide, 2 megapixel macro, and 2 megapixel depth sensors, you can write off those two additional sensors right off the bat. But really, I think this is where the iPhone has a chance to fight back. Because with the A13 Bionic and its latest ISP, the iPhone SE is easily one of the best shooters in its price segment. And with 4K 60 FPS, video recording versus 4K 30. That's another advantage for the iPhone SE as well. But on the front, it's a different story with a 20 megapixel F2.2 on the Poco X3 versus only seven megapixel F2.2 on the iPhone SE. So have a look at these samples, both day and night and video samples, and let's talk about them when we get back. This is front facing video on the Poco X3 NFC and on the iPhone SE. Shooting in 4K, 30 FPS. And this is about the earliest I've ever taken footage here in Hong Kong. I think it's like before 9 a.m. right now. Gorgeous day here, beautiful blue skies. Stabilization looks great. But hit me up in the comments, what do you think? And this is front facing video on the Poco X3 NFC and the iPhone SE. Shooting in full HD, 30 FPS. Just a beautiful day here in Hong Kong. Can't really see the uh, blue sky there. Both overexpose it. But stabilization looks great. Hope you guys are doing well. And hit me up in the comments, what do you think? So what'd you guys think? Did the Poco X3 with all these additional sensors just surpass the iPhone SE? Or did the iPhone SE with a single camera on the back prevail? Guys, I think in the camera department is where we see the true power of this iPhone SE with daytime shots that I just think were more balanced and nighttime shots that were far clearer. Yes, the Poco X3 did get some more exposure in its shots, but there's just so much more detail in all the shots of this iPhone SE. And once you factor in the 4K 60 FPS video and even 4k 30 that I consider the gold standard on any phone and you have this lowly single 12 megapixel camera that actually beats the Poco X3 and its four cameras the Poco X3 put up a good fight but in the end I give the camera win to the iPhone SE and while I'm not going to do any gaming in this video, let me just say, in the gaming department, come on guys, do I need to even say it, it would be a hands down victory for this Poco X3 NFC. Yes, the iPhone SE has better performance and it will be able to play these games at higher settings versus the Poco X3 NFC, but with this giant display, immersive audio experience, and with that 120Hz refresh rate, 240Hz touch sampling rate, let's face it guys, the gaming win hands down would go to the Poco X3 NFC. So that's it for this video guys and my final verdict between the Poco X3 NFC and the iPhone SE. Let's quickly recap the sections. 
The iPhone SE ended up with four victories here in performance, in the fingerprint scanner, vibration motor, and in cameras. But the Poco X3 took the rest of the wins here in design, display, YouTube and content playback, battery, speakers, and if gaming had been tested that would have been another win for the Poco X3 NFC. But now let's not forget the most important section here which is price. And when you think about the fact that you can pick up this Poco X3 NFC for nearly half the price of this iPhone SE, well then on sheer value alone I think you have your answer. And there are certain things that Poco have cut back on a little bit here, maybe the display LCD quality could be a bit better. But on the contrary, you have 120 hertz refresh rates, a modern design, solid performance from the Snapdragon 732, terrific battery life, even louder speakers, and cameras that didn't beat the iPhone SE, but did get fairly close on a number of shots. The reality is guys, if you're in Apple camp, the iPhone SE is hands down going to be the easy recommendation to all you guys. But is the iPhone SE really worth two Poco X3 NFCs? It definitely is not. And just for sheer value alone, I give the overall win in this comparison to the Poco X3 NFC. But hit me up in the comments, which phone of these would you pick? And tell me, since I'm pretty sure I know where the comments are going with this one, tell me one thing about the iPhone SE that you do like. Hit me up in the comments, I'd love to hear about it. And that's it for this video, if you liked it, give me that thumbs up. And if you love the content of Frankie Tech, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon for future updates. Thanks for watching this Poco X3 NFC versus iPhone SE comparison, I really do appreciate it. And thanks once again to Dr. Phone for sponsoring this video, and this is where I leave you by saying... This is Frankie Tech, signing off. Have a good one.